Hi everyone! Today we are reviewing Flowerscape in Paradise, which is the brand new book from Maggie Enterios. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Uh, this is the second in the series from Maggie. The first one was called Flowerscape and I did review it when it first came out, but I can't show it to you to compare with this one today because I've got my Nana colour in it at the moment. So um, I've managed to get her into doing it and she's having great fun with it at the moment. So it's exactly the same size, shape, kind of format as the original book. Obviously the subject matter is slightly different because we're looking at lots of different tropical flora and fauna in this book. So here's the back and it says, step into a vibrant, colourful paradise with this collection of stunning designer illustrations inspired by tropical destinations around the world. So it's got a lovely blush pink interior cover. We've got the title page and the um, copyright information. Then we've got a book belongs to nameplate. So you can write your name in there, maybe the date that you start the book and then colour in all of the tropical leaves around it. We've then got an introduction from Maggie, and this is saying that as she was illustrating the book, she fondly remembered all of the places she'd been fortunate enough to visit and imagined all the places that she hopes to someday see. So let's have a look through. Ah, yes, so this wasn't something that was in the original book. This is a new uh, thing that Maggie has brought to this, which is flower identification by way of QR codes. So you scan this on the camera app of your phone and it will take you instantly to whatever flower you are trying to colour and it will give you colour reference. Um, it will probably help where, you know, where to put different colours on the actual petals and leaves. So it's just a great, quick instant reference to the exact plants and flowers that are in this book. So we're going to give it a try. Let's start on the first page. So as you can see, we have got uh, Clivia and Torch Ginger, which are the two flowers uh, represented on the fo facing page in the illustration. So that's how the format of the book pretty much goes. You've got like two practice flowers and then they're incorporated into an illustration. So I've got my camera app open and I'm going to hover it over the QR code and then you'll see that we get a link showing up straight away. If I click that link, it's going to take us straight to the actual flowers that we've got. We've got the clivia and the torch ginger and you can see where to put highlights and shading. You can see exactly which colours to use. Again, if you're wanting to do it realistically, you can use this reference or you can colour them sky blue, pink and rainbow if you wanted to. So yeah, it's just really handy to have that feature incorporated into the book. So let's continue. This, this is on every page, by the way. You will see that we have a QR code in the corner. You've got the, the two practice flowers and then we've got the illustration. So it's really nice how it's been laid out. And as you can see, this is one that I've coloured. If you follow me on social media, you might have seen it already as I did post it after colouring and I really enjoyed doing this. I coloured this with Copic markers and um, I also used a white paint pen to create these these leafy details around the edge. They're not I'm not professing to be an amazing artist or, or you know someone that can draw but I thought I'd add a bit more detail to it. I wanted it to be a full page um, colourful very tropical illustration so there we go. So I used a um, written tutorial for the Kiwis and I will link that in the description below. But other than that, I just I winged it really. I winged it, wung it. <laughs> but I will show you going back to the um, going back to this. If we click on that one and go to this page, we've got the porcelain flower and the kiwi blossom. But it also tells you the birds that are pictured. So these are actually rainbow lorikeets which I didn't have a clue. And I was thinking, how am I going to find out what these birds are? Because they did just look like, just look like a bit of a parakeet kind of bird. But it, I knew that it probably wasn't going to be that particular species or particular type. So it's really handy that she's actually included the, the, the name of the birds that are pictured as well. So I was able to use a reference photo for these rainbow parakeets and it was just a lot of fun. And it was great doing something with alcohol markers as well. I want to do more of that. It's quite a quick medium and it pays off, you know, it pays off quickly. With, whereas with pencils, they do take a longer time. And uh, yeah, 
really, really enjoyed it. So as you can see on the back, I have sacrificed the two illustrations here, but I don't mind doing that because we've always still got the, um, the big illustration on the other side. So what have we got? We've got blue star ferns and anthoriums. Never heard of them, but I have seen them before. So it's just one of those names that I didn't actually know. Uh, just moving you back to the middle, we've got the Protea and the Plumeria, and this illustration shows them in a vase. So I do like the compositions that Maggie's put together with the borders, or some of them are just maybe circular or contained in a way. But um, yeah, I, I do really like it. It's very interesting to look at. It's not just a bunch of flowers on the page. So we've got the Kaleidoscope Orchid and the Pentas. Then we've got the Wax Flower and the Rose Pagonia. We've also got a monkey on here and I'm just wondering whether if we do scan that in it will show us maybe what type of monkey it is. Let's have a go. Uh, there we are. Ah, there you go, you see. Cap capuchin? Capuchin monkey, I think it's called. And then obviously we've got the two flowers there as well. I love it. I think it's great to have this interactive, <clears throat> you know, part of the book that really helps colourists decide what colours to use and where to put them. We've got a passion flower. This is like a huge round blank area. What is this? I'm guessing that that must be the fruit of the flower, maybe. What what fruit do passion... Passion fruit? Of course. <laughs> is that, That's my brain, you see. It takes time. I get there in the end, usually, but it takes time. So I'm guessing that is passion fruit then, because, I mean, it should be, surely. But let's scan it in. This is more handy than I even thought. Come on, scan. There we go. No, there's no mention of what that fruit is, but I, it's probably because it's very obvious that it's passion fruit and I'm just being completely thick. But yeah, anyways. <laughs> then we've got the bleeding heart vine and the gloxinia. So yeah, that's got an interesting sort of Aztec type border around it. Uh, I'll I won't, you know, stick around on each page because I just want you to see everything and not have to listen to me waffle. Uh, or wattle, as this one is called. Uh, sas Sasanqua, blue plumbago and camellia, mm. honeysuckle and tea plant or Thai plant. And this is in like a shell vase, that's pretty. Get some iridescent shell on there or iridescent scales even on this turtle. So lobster claws, these are called. Um, and I guess it's because they look like lobster claws, but I've never actually seen one of those before. Then we've got Queen's Wreath. And Scarlet Star, look how she's put them in these lovely hanging planters. You see quite a lot of these in people's houses nowadays, don't you? And it's with the, is it macrame that holds them together? It's a type of, I don't know, fabric stitching work thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Rock Trumpet and Giant Wax Flower with a seahorse front and centre. And we've got the African Iris. I love this. It's like a stained glass window. So you could, you might even want to do those flowers in a stained glass style. That'd be nice. Spotted begonia and begonia blossom. Flannel flower and warata. Warata. <laughs> I believe I've seen these before, unless I'm thinking of something like the thistle, which in my brain looks very similar. Oh, we've got a chameleon here. So we've got rosy periwinkle, Layla orchid and Arangis orchid. I definitely, definitely am not pronouncing these properly. We've got hydrangeas. I love hydrangeas and medanilla. Med 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 Eucalyptus beehive ginger and hibiscus. Oh, I like beehive ginger, but that's probably because I like bees. <laughs> but yeah. Some of these obviously are more detailed and intricate than others. So, you know, if you just wanted to do a little bit of colouring, you could just do one of these on this side, or you could try and complete one of these smaller illustrations, or you could go for one that's got a big frame around it and lots of extraneous detail around there. Citronella and aloe. Sandpaper vine and Myla Minute flower. Ooh, that looks a bit like a pansy to me, slightly. Um, but then we've got some... 
uh, underwater creatures in here. We've got some starfish. Uh, so maybe these are grown around areas with water, possibly. Got the bird of paradise. They're very interesting things to draw. This looks like a magic carpet from Aladdin. Bird of paradise, magic carpet. Moth orchid and blue lily with some flamingos. Golden chalice vine, pinwheel plumeria and com comparetia, comparetia. <laughs> orchid pitcher plant that's interesting and a privet see again we've got this sort of it's like arabian nights kind of thing same with the um the what was it called again the rug thing the magic carpet <laughs> it's very reminiscent of that to me dragon fruit orange blossom avocado blossom persimmon flower and lychee berry so these are all fruits aren't they is an avocado a fruit Avocado has a, a, a pit, doesn't it? A stone. It must be a fruit, but it doesn't seem like a fruit, does it? It's quite savoury, I think. I don't like them, they're horrible. Um, but yeah, I think these are all things that you can eat. And it's kind of like an illustrated manuscript sort of layout where you've got the different um, squares and shapes separated from each other. So that will be a really nice one to colour. We've got the a Aeonium and coral bell succulent in this uh, sort of stretched diamond shape. Crimson catel catelia and canna lily with some frogs, little tree dart frogs. Are they called tree dart frogs or just dart frogs? I can't remember. Begonia flower and blue tango in a lovely vase again. Pomegranate blossom. So this will be interesting, colouring all the pomegranate seeds and making it look really juicy and shiny. And then hibiscus and canna, canna oh, I don't know why I bother. I'm just trying to give you a laugh, really. Canna, canna ohi sunburst. We've got lime blossom with obviously limes and angel's trumpet. Angel's trumpet are really nice, aren't they? I love that shape. Boat orchid and impala lily. Mm. This is also incorporated into a pineapple. So I actually have how to colour pineapple rind as a tutorial on my channel, if you search it up. And this would be a great candidate for using that tutorial. It looks very similar to one that I did in the tutorial. So if you're wondering how to colour this, might be an idea to go ahead and look at my tutorial. Then we have heliconia and boa vine. Oh, look, we've got some, what are these, lizards of some sort? They look like lizards, don't they? I really like the uh, the oval shape as well that they're contained into. Rock trumpet and begonia leaf and plumeria with some, what are these then? Pelicans? <laughs> probably not, probably some puffin, pelican. I, I'd get confused, honestly. I don't watch enough David Attenborough, clearly. Water lily and dwarf lotus with some koi carp, I believe they are. Plumeria and fuchsia. So we've already had plumeria, haven't we? Or am I thinking of the other book? And then pincushion protea, Madagascar periwinkle and daylily. Beautiful. Red ginger, jasmine and dahlia. Again, in sort of like a window type of format really like that imagine doing the backgrounds different colors on this that would look really good maui red flame lily oh i like that banksia and anthurium again we have had anthurium i'm sure or something that sounded like it but that banksia that's a big one isn't it that takes over the whole illustration but i really like the flame lilies that'd be interesting to color then we've got Morning Glory and Plumeria. That's what I said, isn't it, Plumeria? That we've had it a few times. I'm sure it is. Yeah, Plumeria. So they, they are featured, some of them, several times throughout the book. That's kind of like a wallpaper design, I guess. Then we've got Trumpet Vine and Spotted Renanthera. That's, that reminds me, I'll tell you what that reminds me of. Where's my book? It reminds me of those. I don't know whether they are the same or not, 
but uh, it does remind me of those. They, I don't think they are the same because the centre looks different and the petals aren't as wide, but it does remind me of it. It's It sort of looks a little bit diseased. Um, I think that these, um, these flowers that I coloured are very pungent. They have a very off-putting scent. Um, but yeah, anyways, just reminded me of those. <sighs> Gosh, that book is very dusty. <laughs> Um, yeah, so there we go. And then next is Oleander. Love that name. That could that'd be a really nice kid's name, wouldn't it? Oleander. No, actually, that'd do my head in. Uh, Flowering Maple. Really like this as well. Spherical. It's almost like it's in a, a round glass terrarium. You could colour it like that, couldn't you? Oh, and we've come to the end. So we've got a bit about the artist and some special thanks. And that, my loves, <laughs> is it. So a little bit about the paper. It is bright white and it is very smooth. I think that's why I decided initially to colour this with the Copic markers because I thought it's really smooth and I haven't coloured anything in alcohol markers for quite a while, so I'll go for the alcohol markers. But as for pencils, it does have a very slight grain on it, very slight, but definitely if I was to call it, I would say it was a smooth cardstock. I think we ought to do a little bit of testing, shouldn't we really, before I let me go. So let me get some colours, let me get some colours. Let's go with the Scarlet Lake Prismacolor. Uh, it's a bit lighter. What's that one? Neon. Then um, orange. We've got a pale vermilion for in between. Let's do that. Yeah, that'll do. Let's see if we can do a little blend and see how they feel on the paper. They do feel really nice actually, despite the smooth stock of the paper. It's colouring on there very nicely. There's a really smooth lay down and it's filling in the, uh, the tooth nicely. So I think you get a really nice flat smooth look when using Prismacolor pencils. I will get a different type of pencil in a moment, like an oil based one and test that as well. Now I know this isn't a rigorous test, but I haven't had time to colour another image from the book with pencils in order to give you more of an in-depth opinion. So we will just do this quite quickly. Let's get the orange out as well. Yeah, I don't think you'll have a problem with Prismacolor. I mean, Prismas are really versatile anyway because they're so soft. But um, that's that seems really nice to me. Very bright. You've got all of the vibrance of the colour and it's laid down very smoothly as well. So as for layering, I don't really know um, how many layers you could build up on such a smooth stock, but I'm happy with that result. Let me find something that is oil based. Uh, I've got some polychromos here in the spares drawer. Let's go for some reds again. Um, what have we got? We've got, where's the darker one? We've got dark red, and then I'll go for deep scarlet red, and then I want a sort of orangey red. Is that gonna be in this, oops, in this particular group? Probably not, let me get the oranges. Okay, so let's go for this one, which is dark cadmium orange. I think that's a that's the best one to do. Is this a dark cadmium as well? Yeah, same one. Okay, let's try with the oil base then. So we're starting off with the dark red. Now, as we know with oil based pencils, you do have to work in light layers. If you try and go full on pressure straight away, you're not gonna get great results um, and it is a lot more difficult. So you do have to be patient with the oil based pencils. And usually you would require a toothy paper to catch all of the pigment and you know enable you to layer these oil pencils but so far so good i'm actually quite impressed because feeling the paper it it, it did make me think oh this might be a little bit too smooth for pencils but i tell you what that is not bad at all 
and I think I would quite happily enjoy using pencils on this paper. Yeah, perfect. Right, so we've had a little test. I hope that's helped you um, if you're wondering about what medias to use. As you see, you can use uh, alcohol markers as well. Just make sure you put something behind it. So yeah, it's a really good all-rounder and a surprise, a pleasant surprise. So I don't think this book is actually out just yet. It might be in America or it might just be on the cusp of coming out in the US. Um, but over here, I believe it is next month. I'm going to put the Amazon links in the description so that you can quickly click on there and just see if you need to pre-order it or whether it is available to you now. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it's not quite come out yet, but it's very, very close to release. So I really hope you've enjoyed another review of uh, Flowerscape or another review from me of Flowerscape. <laughs> that makes no sense, does it? Um, we always have a laugh, though, don't we? We always have a laugh or at least you laugh at me and that's that's fine. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, links in the description. Hope you've enjoyed the video and I will see you soon on Colour with Claire.